Ball, they'll throw it to curveball, and sure enough, a lot of a lot of a baton coming out from E home is definitely something to switch it up. Jacob, uh, how you feeling about this? I'm excited to see how they're gonna lane this as well. That's, mm -hmm. that's, it's not just a, the, the tiny baton thing, but that ties into how they're gonna lane it. I sort of think that you just said things kind of standard. You can even go for safe lane tiny uh, and just offline the uh, abandon and have the bounty hunter roam around. They're with the tiny, you have some crowd control. You've got the instant lockdown that we saw was so necessary. But I mean, secret. The beastmaster is going to have a rough time just because of the Abaddon. I'm not really sure. Look at this. They're already oh. cutting down the trees. So, oh, the eleven. The plan is here to pull that off lane camp, toss one of the creeps, the big creep preferably, into the creep wave to pull it in will be a, a nice abuse of this offlane camp that we haven't seen too many players take advantage of. Yeah, so what you're saying is it's an offlane tiny, he has the boots first and he's gonna go down and, and just remove the creep wave in its entirety. Yeah, and that's a safe lane uh, abandon, which is something I don't see very frequently, if at all. So we're in for a treat, how are they gonna kill him? It's gonna be hard, but... I mean, even the death bar, like, those two cores are gonna be so difficult to kill in this game, right? Between all the sustain that Ehome has? Yeah, but for sure, but... The problem is just the, the damage output, right? Yeah. And the control... Don't really... Ehome just start running at Secret here in the very first fight over the battery room. Nice double impale from Pylai Dai already put things up right. They did get the battery room, they might even get the first one as well, our core! He doesn't have a prayer getting out of that one alive with the Spirit Siphon slowing him down. Secret took the fight and they lost. Ehome already in a good position in this game number two. And they actually got both boundary rooms as well. I think I saw from the Haas or something like that, it was 60% if you got both the bounty roots because of how strong it is, right? Mm -hmm. You're able to just set up two lanes at once. As a result, and your mid laner is going to be in a significantly worse position. Old 11, not a bat rider, but he'll still cut behind the tier 1 tower and pick up the creep wave, knowing that the secret supports wouldn't be there to stop him. I'm going to go for this dual lane, too. The top. So this is probably the right idea, right? In order to deal with the idea of the tiny being able to pull via tosses, they actually run sort of an aggro lane and put some pressure on the Abaddon relatively early. Yeah, I think this is actually a pretty decent idea just because it also forces the bounty hunter up here and your Beastmaster should do fine at bottom, especially since it's universe. Kind of like the king of one-on-ones in the off lane. As he already has a Quelling Blade, the Tiny does have a decent amount of base damage, but the downside is that this Tiny expected to play against three heroes, so he doesn't really have that stat heavy of a build, not even having a salve, whereas uh, the Beastmaster are fully prepped for this one-on-one -on -one matchup. Yeah, the Stout Shield coming in, making that difference as well, in, in armor as well, so every every hit they trade will always go in universe favor. There is, of course, the Bounty Hunter. Why Ice 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 needs to help out Old Eleven here. They are going to throw out that Avalanche, finally and get a couple more right clicks in, but uh, just doesn't some seem like they're going to be able to do this. They still have a toss, but that would be a dangerous play, trying to toss the Bounty Hunter into that Tier 1 tower range. So, Universe does get back, pops a healing south. Still be good for this lane. Not a lot of opportunity so far for either team. It's just the Bounty Hunter going to be as annoying and pesky as possible as the Queen of Pain, not even going to go for the level of the Shadow Strike, opting not to any sort of hits with the Death Prophet is the Spirit Siphon is so good. CS game is looking a bit better for Secret with the Queen of Pain getting so much farm in the top lane. We'll now find our Generation Rune. Starts heading toward mid. I mean, without IO, 39% win rate, not even very good. Especially offlane tiny, something that we don't see very frequently. He is picking up a good amount of levels though, old 11. Then again, what is the win rate for Senses when an Abaddon is carry? That's I what I want to know. Yeah, it's even more... Even more of a rare sight. This is the first time I'm casting it anyways. I have to harken back to the, uh, the times where Loda was playing it. Yeah, it's been... Like that. Quite a long time. It's been a while. I'm especially interested to see how it, it combos in, into the mid-game with the Oracle. Are we going to see this kind of new imbalance where you just can't kill anything? I mean, I think that's the game plan, right? Is Ehome want to be able to pump up the cores, make it really difficult for anybody to die and just run it secret repeatedly? Use the Abaddon to make sure that the Doom doesn't really do a lot. 
Yeah, but all the can't really die to the Doom either, just because you can. You always have to borrow time, right? So you're in an okay position, and if anybody else gets uh, doomed, you can just Apotic Shield repeatedly. And you've got the Arc Warden, but we have seen, or the Oracle. And we we have seen, though, when you put too much into just keeping those two cores alive and not picking that many Disables, that's kind of the trap that uh, Secret themselves fell into yesterday. Which kind of leads us into perhaps Old Eleven must have a good laning phase for him to be much more of a factor, for him to be able to output enough damage to make up for the heavy, heavy sustain that Ehom invested in. Yeah, because of the support from the Bouncy Hunter, he's he's fine for, so far. He gets to, uh, to control the rune as well. It's gonna go for Universe here. He's gonna be able to easily land this avalanche. Just goes for the toss straight upwards. Gonna try and run him down underneath his tier one tower. Does have the haste rune. It should be easily enough. And will end up going down underneath the tower, but it's still fine. Claiming the experience or on the kill on the Beastmaster. It's really all he was looking for there. Wrap around here behind old chicken. Two supports. Popping their head out, realizing that old chicken is already far enough back. The gank not going to be successful. And they can feel free to leave our tour alone at this top lane. Not a whole lot that they can do to this top lane. That's the one downside of the Abaddon carry is that he doesn't have the best kill potential whatsoever. Like, what are you going to do? You're just going to run at them? He can always just astral himself. Uh, killing mid is going to be difficult because of the fact that it's the Queen of Pain. So if you just look at the layout of the map, it's pretty much this Beastmaster that uh, I think Ehom want to take advantage of. Do you expect him to uh, to ma max miscoil over the Curse of Avernus? Uh, I still think Curse of Avernus is so good, just in because when you want to hit towers as well. And I think this is meant to be kind of a fighting core. It's a lot better than the miscoil is. And then with, with the lag of disables, they'll take all the slow they can get. Yeah, exactly. Bottom lane, ice, 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 is setting up. This does seem to kind of be a trend. You, you brought it up, and I kind of want to hit back on it. The, the fact that Bounty Hunter picked up in the draft, ends up at the end of the draft being left with essentially only one lane that he can really put pressure on. It feels like uh, it's really obvious to read the Bounty Hunter's movements when uh, you shore up two of your lanes so much. Alternatively, he could go top and try to mess with the OD, but there's no guarantee of a kill there, especially with uh, Puppy and Pilot Dive roaming around. So I think this is just the higher percentage uh, kind of harassment that they can make work, and Eternal Envy is going to take the top DD rune. Wins the foot race, unknowingly, against Ice Ice Ice. But they, they must have known this going into this game, that they are heavily reliant on levels as you see top lane. Benrear is going to be run down by Puppy. He doesn't care. They know that Ehome are unlikely going to be able to TP and uh, really punish this one. But they're in so deep and it took them a really long time to actually kill Benrear. Now they get the Hex on to hold on him. They're actually going to be able to burst him down with the ultimate to keep up the opponent shield, but it doesn't matter. One more right click and it finishes them off. They're underneath deep, underneath this tower. Old Eleven is here with an extra bit of revenge. They claim one core kill. It looks like should be able to run down Pylai Die as well. He's out of options. He's just buying more and more time as a game of Ring Around the Rosie commences. Is, but it has to end eventually. Still, they managed to be able to pick up the kill on the OD as RTZ is going to go down into the tower. The Tiny gets a lot of gold out of that. Uh, as a result of that rotation, he's going to pick up his little 7. And that burst damage is quite a lot of this. They're going to sandwich Puppy. Ice, 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 and a TZN might be able to get some sort of return fire here. Old Eleven not going to be saved, but they do get their turnaround kill on a Puppy and start right-clicking Universe, but I think he realizes he can win this. Even if it is 1v2, he's got some extra backup with our TZ. So the good trade-off here is that the Bounty Hunter is getting some, some level and, of course, farm as well. He's almost 6, and once they get that level 6, as well as 6 on the Abaddon, they probably want to start taking these fights. Uh, he's almost there! An Astral Imprisonment, such a short range. Yeah, that's actually what I was going to point out, is that even though it's just 2 for 2 uh, trade-offs in these engagements, Ice 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 is picking up so many levels, he's already going to hit uh, his level 6 at 8 minutes. I think last game when we were talking amongst ourselves, we were saying that even at 10 minutes, if you were to pick up, if you were to pick up the level six track uh, on the bounty hunter, you'd still be in a really good position. And for him to have it this early on with the tranquil boots as well, already having the headdress, a much more successful game for Ice Ice Ice. Which means our first rotation of the bounty hunter with this smoke. I'm presuming he's going to be uh, joining someone else. It looks like the Oracle for the time being. They're going to head to the mid lane where currently Ehome are trying to put some pressure on that tier 1 tower. It's not quite enough to take it though, only bringing it down to half health. Yeah, I think Old Chicken wishes he had mana so he could clear out the creep wave real fast and go with, hit the tower with, with Tiny standing. 
Ready for the uh, TP in though, old 11. And they want to see if they can uh, get this surprise jump on somebody, but at the same time, Puppy and the rest of Secret are beginning to close in on this mid lane, hoping to be able to punish E-Home for sitting so far forward. Old 11 is actually in a kind of a nasty spot, and he does get spotted out here. Ice, 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 he's going to be able to help him out, but it might be too late. The Primal Roar goes down, and Old 11 is definitely dead. Team Secrets. They don't stumble into that tiny positioning and end up being able to uh, scout him out and punish him for being so far forward. Yeah, and Pilot Die desperately needs levels in this game. 0, 1, and 2 hasn't really been able to accomplish nearly as much as the support duo on the other side is Ice 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 just throwing out tracks. And Secret already going for the Smith Towers. This aggressive blink forward. Van Rear tries to save himself, but of course that's pure damage from Arteezy. Ice 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 is gonna be the next target already impaled up. Sonic Wave goes out, they just pop him. He gets off the Shuriken, but it doesn't seem to be enough. Old Chicken can't really stop and win this fight without the exorcism at Lanham. He's gonna be able to help him out. Looks like Old Eleven gets the toss up in the air, but it's not enough to kill the OD. While Lanham is eventually gonna take out from this Doom, and Old Chicken is just being kited around the OD. Did not die to the tiny, turns around and kills him instead, and e -home, they lost everyone in that fight. Yeah, that, that's the problem with this with this lineup from e -home. They don't have any control at all, especially not with the tiny being down. And then on top of that, the, the doom going on off on the Abaddon, and of course being able to astral him had he had an ultimate up. It's, just, it's almost too easy for Secret to just do whatever they please in these team fights. Yeah, what's important to remember about track kills is, first, you actually have to get the kills. It's not nearly enough to just have this hero kind of just walk around, uh, throw out tracks. You want to at least have somewhat even engagements, but Secret not giving up a single kill makes and, them And they were prepared for the bounty hunter with the sentry ward as well. Yeah, he went down to the, the tower. Like, this is... I mean, the game is still in its infancy. Nothing has really been uh, too definitive quite yet. Secret have taken some control, but Ehome could just as easily turn things around. They have a lot of burst damage coming their way, and all it takes is two or three track kills. Or perhaps uh, well, that I could be led into by a bad initiation from uh, Secret. They're looking to be able to get some sort of primal roar kill, but they do have Lanham now. They pop out of their whole Ehome, hoping to be able to get somebody here, but they're missing everything! Nothing claimed there from Ehome. We talked about the lack of the table. Shuriken not going to go out. Ice 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 is still trying to hunt here. Ehome, they could overrun the tier 1 tower, but it doesn't mean much if they don't actually get any hero kills. Pylite Eye is even going to be able to CP out. No track kills whatsoever. Secret are not giving up anything for free. You can just see how, how desperate Ehome is to, to engage and get in on them, passing by the tower, just running at them, but there's nothing to do with Tiny doesn't get off an avalanche, there's just no way of catching them. He doesn't even have a, a disabled hero to toss in on them. Yeah, that's what I was going to point out too, is I was looking at this lineup and thinking, who does he even toss? Like, does it even matter? Maybe he tosses the Abaddon in and he gets a few hits of the Curse of Avernus. Maybe that's your best option here at this rate, but... Uh, I, this just does not look like the... Oh, oh don't forget Ice Ice Ice! A short memory there as that counter ward catches him out once again. In e home in these last two games, they just kind of look out of sorts right now. And it doesn't even feel like Secret is playing exceptionally. It's just e Homer being a little bit sloppier than I'm used to them being. Eternal Envy. That's a nice little one-inch blink there. Just to be able to recover some mana from Arteezy's aura. Bottom. I, I think e Home realized that they've lost way too much ground at this point. They can't really take a straight up fight. So not trying to defend that tier two. Lanham's just going for the split push at bottom lane. Yeah, D2, D, these two games have just shown so far that, that e Home just... I question both their team play and their strategy. Their picks are completely off the wall. And that was something I loved about them in Frankfurt, that they just went with their own style. But it was also something where they it, it had a lot of synergy and it made a lot of sense. They could put on this early early game aggression and take it to the other teams. With these lineups, it's it's like they insist on picking the support that is a saving saving support. You know, it, it, it can go in and heal or keep them alive and so forth. But it has no real damage output. This this lineup is just all over the place. With another smoke and potentially another failed initiation from Ehome. A secret. There's this track at the back here. Old Eleven is going to go for the toss forward here on the bounty hunter. This impale. I like die. Oh, turn around here for Eternal Levy. Gets a big sonic wave. The sound falls them up. They're going to try and track down Eternal Levy as much as possible. They just can't keep it one play. Now the terror. Arcadian drops the hammer. Able to take out Blue Ones. The only surviving member, but he's losing intelligence and losing it faster than you can even see. I like die. He finally goes down, but it doesn't really matter. He trades away his life for a guaranteed kill on Old Chicken. A one for five exchange. 
and Secret seem unstoppable just like game number one. To add insult to injury, they didn't even get a track kill for that one kill. So even then, I don't even know how you justify that if you're on the side of E-Home right now. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you don't. Four kills giving up that. That's, it's just a, a display of what we just saw in the bottom lane. Them running at them and having nothing to catch them with. The Avalanche didn't hit again and just nothing they can really do to, to keep Secret in this place. They have a Queen of Pain that blinks around freely. There's not going to be any point in time of this game where this Queen of Pain is going to feel threatened. Yeah, she has so much HP from the drums too, and uh, something pretty funny is that they took our advice, they tried to toss the Janata Bounty Hunter <laughs> to maybe set things up, but what are you, you going to do against the uh, I mean, the posterity of that statement alone just describes what this strategy can and cannot do. Yeah, yeah. the situation does not look good for Ehome right now, as they just don't have that instant jump that they need to maybe start a decent fight for themselves. Secret staying relatively huddled up here around the mid lane, Highlight Eye. Always sitting behind Eternal Levy, being his guardian angel, waiting for a potential initiation from Ehome that he can respond to. But Ehome, all they're doing is just scouting out the Radiant Jungle. Eternal Levy is going to come in with his haste rune. Silence doesn't mean much. You've got 522 movement speed, so Eternal Levy just keeps on running at them. Spirit Siphon easily cut off there. And Eternal Levy just feels like he's kind of toying with Ehome because he knows there's no hard disables to make him uh, fearful. Went for a Hood of Defiance so that he can easily survive through Shiny knowing that there's no other disables. Puppy's going to be a target here. They will be able to slow him down. Puppy is going to be eaten alive here by the Exorcism. The track bounces over to Eternal Levy and Secret. So I guess that's the, uh, the only pseudo disable they have except for Tiny. Fortune's end. Yeah, it's not the most reliable thing, and as the game progresses, it might not be what you exactly want to do, but... Still, a kill is a kill at a point like this, and... Aggressive jumps forward. forward. Prismant with the Exit still out. Old Chicken may be able to heal himself soon. Gets up a silence onto Eternal Levy. The Roar comes down, going on to Fenrir. He's immediately taken off with the Aquatic Shield. Now they have the Oracle save, but it might not be enough. It's a huge Sonic Wave hit, and it's only going to be Lana and Death Prophet who are able to keep themselves relatively healthy. Lana again just being kited around time and time again. Ice 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 battling up against Eternal Levy, but he knows this is a fight he just can't win. Has to run himself away while the OD is able to get Death Prophet. And as he's so very fond at this point, he's got a blink dagger, the drums of endurance, very close to a veil of discord. I mean, when you look at the fights. Okay. Okay! Alright, it's easy. Says you wanna try and walk away from that one, ice, ice, ice. That was deal. 75 in stolen. You're not gonna fight that hero. <laughs> and the crazy part is that in some ways, uh, whenever the OG sees the Abaddon, he's like, I'm very happy about this. Even yeah. with your ultimate pipe pop, I don't care. I'll heal you to full <laughs> as long as I steal like 40 in. Radiant's <laughs> top tower is under attack. Yeah, we're seeing in many of these fights, the ultimate isn't even needed for a secret to just be able to run over Ehom. I need 200 off his blink dagger still. There is a mechanism up on the uh, bouncy now, however. I guess that adds some flavor to your team fights and makes you a little bit more tanky, but. I still think their primary problem is they just can't burst anybody down. Secret almost always get all of their abilities off as a result of these fights. You have to make this fight 4v5 if you're E-Home, almost instantly. The only heroes that you can really do that to are the Lion or the Doom, but we saw how hard it was for them to lock down Puppy to begin with. A full out pipe for Eternal Lemby. He's going to make sure he never gives up a track kill to E-Home. Not your typical Queen of Pain build. Yeah, I guess he just thinks that they don't really lack for damage, which they don't. And they've got the uh, they've got the Veil of Discord now too to go along e with home. it. Okay, the setup might actually be good. Some of these heroes they jump forward already get his battle roll. That's gonna be no more gold. It's gonna be able to save old chicken and just being targeted down by the OD. This means he's gonna fall so quickly. The Embodied Shield is just not enough against the finger of death. Bottom, yes, he's healing up, but he's doomed. He can't help his allies. So they leave him for last, he's the dessert, as the rest of E-Home was consumed by Secret for dinner. 18 minutes in, and Secret team on the verge of just being able to go high ground. I am 25 to 9 already, Secret. E-Home already had the same idea, they immediately spoke into each other, but you notice that this time around, Universe, right on top of things, he immediately ults the Oracle with absolutely no time. That team fight synergy from start to finish, Artezi gets rid of Lon M in that fight too. Oh no!
Wow, that's 85 hints. Good lord, why are cheesy? Yeah, you made an extremely good point on the on the case of a, a battle with the uh, borrowed time and how Atizi just loves stealing all his intelligence. His secret just looks so on top of things. He's trying to get some harassment shuriken damage, but it's not much, Lana. He's even going for the deny. They actually jump in now with old 11. Oh, they actually get the toss back. Look, there is the imprisonment save in old 11. He may be dropped here from Arteezy. Comes in with Merlin. He misses the stunning wave on old 11, but he hits the rest of evil, allowing Arteezy to be able to try up here and take one. The death profit goes down, and he's coming back with life number two. e -home regrouping now, wondering whether or not they can initiate, but it's Levy. He says, you want to initiate? I'll initiate on you instead, forcing e -home back to the fountain while Secret casually take that range rack on their way out. 27 to 9. I thought that last score was going to be rough, but this one's even going to be Oracle Ultimate, is that even going to be enough to save? Arteezy hits so damn hard, he's going to be able to take all 11 even if Oklahoma doesn't drop. Barely keeps himself alive underneath the fountain. And they're just being beaten back right now, and Ehome, they just don't have heroes that can punish this kind of aggression. Like, they're diving them nearly to their fountain, and still nothing's being done about it. Puppy even playing a hood for himself at this point. Not even really caring about the lack of item efficiency. Last game, Seeker really took their time to make sure they had the biggest net worth lead they could before they went high ground. This time around, they're not dropping a beat. They keep on going. As the cooldown's already back up, the Doom placed on Lonim, and the team will be able to take one of those racks, but they have to back out now. This is where Ehom really have to catch something, but again, time and time again, we keep saying they have no catch. They don't have the disables. They don't have anything to stop Secret from retreating. Is that a new trend we're gonna see now from, from Secret that they've uh, discovered this Hood of Defiance and, and be active where it creates a spell that super spells you? Oh, Ice, 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 Sunny took the B, Scouting, Highlight Eye leads them right into their trap, will be able to provide the disabled, has the finger of death ready to go, Shuriken stops it for a second, but a second is not enough. Ice, Ice, Ice loses his life and now Ehom. Tree to the high ground. Lonham, his ultimate pop now. He is exposed. E Homer gonna try and turn this one around. Old 11 sitting on the side here. They've been silenced up eternal enemy. They're gonna go for it, but the avalanche misses. He managed to get the blink away. And now they turn towards Puppy instead. But again, the movement speed. He just runs right through him. See you later. Lonham dropping lower and lower. Doesn't have the ultimate to be able to save him. Benrear provides some of the heals though. But it's gonna be Arteezy, the heavy hitter. He's gonna have his blink dagger ready to go soon. Blinks the wrong direction. Doesn't get an imprisonment on anybody. Slow down. Old Eleven jumps in. Tries to grab Eternal Envy, but it's just not enough. Old Chica to be targeted here by Arteezy. They don't have any disabled to stop him. He just keeps right clicking away. He doesn't give a damn about the Oracle Ultimate. As Old Chicken will be able to survive thanks to the Spirit Siphon and the heals during that Oracle Ult, but that is still more. More spells on cooldown for Ehome as Old Eleven tries to go back in, ends up getting juked out. Botic Shields will be able to provide him some saves. Puppy's just trying to close that gap though with the Infernal Blade, turns on the Lana instead. The imprisonment goes out. Ice, Ice, Ice. Comes back here, but Primal War taken out two shot by RTZ. Ehome, even underneath their fountain. They can only, only take so much. Secrets seem to have an unlimited amount of damage. They take it a second later, Brag. The only thing that's stopping them from being able to get Megas at this point is that there's still a tier 1 at the bottom lane. It's gotta be such a frustrating game to play for the E-Home roster as well, just seeing the enemy run around them. They're just running circles around them. Doombringer and Queen of Pain especially in, in, in the start of that fight. They just taunt them. Not really sure what E-Home is supposed to do in this situation. Things aren't getting easier. They're staying in this game so far just to try to keep their tournament hopes alive. Maybe hope that uh, Secret just gets way too over aggressive, but... Arteezy found another pickoff, Old Eleven was too far forward, Arteezy jumps forward, grabs him with the imprisonment, they're gonna try and run him down and get him in the end! Arteezy reads it, the OD ultimate drops, finishes off Old Eleven, there goes their primary initiator, there also goes their primary disabler, and Ehom looking a little bit bewildered as to how they're going to be able to stop this final push of Team Secret. And it just doesn't seem possible. Puppy casually runs in, escapes on him out of the fight entirely with the Doom. RTZ keeps running forward, he saved one hero, he's going to target the next. Takes out the Oracle, now turns his attention onto Old Chicken, waiting him on him, as his ultimate's going to end up going down soon. Another GG! This time 33 to 9, make it 34! And a casual 35 take up before the throne explodes, and Secret! They drop down the loot back in nice and early. People were rather surprised, but now against Ehome, they take two of the most dominant games yet.
that one, series lasted all together, maybe an hour, draft included. It just felt like they got absolutely rolled here from the pick phase That's on. Like, that's 